Deadlock has one of the most unique item systems I've ever seen in a MOBA. So in today's Deadlock Decoded, let's break down how the item system works and the different ways you can get information from it. Starting off, there are seven different places to buy items at the beginning of a match, with one shop in each lane, two secret shops between the orange and blue lanes, and the main shop inside your base. Over the course of a normal match, the shop nearest to your tier 1 lane guardian will close once the guardian has been destroyed, leaving you with only three shop locations by the mid to late game. In order to buy items, approach the shop and press B on your keyboard. This will open up the curiosity shop and will begin letting you buy items from any of the various types and tiers assuming you have enough souls. You can read about the effects of an item by hovering your mouse over it, which provides a brief description and a breakdown of the stats that you'll receive. One easy way to tell how those stats will affect you is by looking at the pop-up to the right or left of the item's description. This pop-up gives you details about which of your abilities are affected and how they would change if you purchase this item. If you're trying to sell an item, hover over the item you already own, which is indicated by a darker box, and then left-click to sell it. If you accidentally purchase an item and immediately sell it without leaving the shop, it will give you a full refund for your souls. But if you leave the shop and sell at a later time, you will only receive a partial refund. At any point in the game, if you want to review your hero's stats, you can hover over each item type in the bottom left and get a detailed breakdown pretty quickly. Under these stats, you'll see your item slots. At the beginning of a game, you'll be able to purchase up to four items of each type, with four flex item slots being opened up as the game progresses. We'll talk more about those later in the video, but for now let's dive into the different item types and how they affect your hero, starting with weapon items. There are four tiers of weapon items, with each tier getting progressively more expensive and providing a differing amount of base weapon damage increase. Regardless of which tier 1 weapon items you purchase, you'll be given a 6% increase in weapon damage in addition to the stats from the item itself. At tier 2, that increase is 10%, at tier 3 it's 14, and at tier 4 you'll get a whopping 18% increase to your weapon damage for each item purchased at that tier. Moving on to the Vitality item tree, it's very similar, but this time around buying items provides you with a percent base health increase based on the tier of the item. At tier 1, it's 11%, two, it's 14%, tier 3 is 17%, and tier 4s provide a 20% base health increase. Finally, we have the Spirit item tree, which provides increased spirit power for every item you purchase, with tier 1s providing 4 spirit power, and each tier above that increasing the power by 4, so tier 2s are 8 spirit, 3s are 12, and tier 4s provide 16 spirit power. For every item type, their cost is associated with their tier, so tier 1s are 500 souls, 2s are 1250, 3s are 3000, and 4s are 6300. There are a few items that break these price points though. These items have components that build into them, increasing their cost slightly if you don't own the pre-component first. You can tell if the item you want to build has a component if they have a white circle as part of their icon. Let's use the weapon item Point Blank as an example. Point Blank costs 3500 souls by default. That's because there is a tier 1 weapon item that is required in order to buy it. If I hover over Point Blank, it also highlights a tier 1 item called Close Quarters. If you already own Close Quarters when trying to purchase Point Blank, it will discount the item 500 souls, because you already own the prerequisite. If you don't own Close Quarters already, buying Point Blank will automatically purchase the component and upgrade it into Point Blank. Now let's go back to the flex slots I mentioned previously. These slots can hold any item of any type, but are only unlocked when your team completes certain milestones throughout a game. These milestones are killing all four tier 1 lane guardians, killing a single enemy lane walker, killing all four of the enemy lane walkers, and destroying one of the enemy's shrines. Now let's talk about what happens if you don't have enough item slots when you try to purchase an item. If this happens, a window will appear asking you to sell one of your current items. A good rule of thumb is to sell the lowest tier items you have first, so if I'm trying to purchase a tier 3 weapon item, I want to sell a tier 1 weapon item since they give me the fewest amount of stats. Be mindful of item components though, because you may not want to sell those while building up to their bigger upgrade. Some items provide additional effects to a chosen hero ability. When this happens, make sure you apply the effect to the ability that would give you the most benefit. For example, the item Quicksilver Reload refills your weapon's magazine when you cast the affected ability. So you'll want to attach the item's effect to an ability with a lower cooldown instead of say an ultimate, that way you can reap the benefits more often. There is one more item type I haven't mentioned yet. Active items. There are multiple active items spread across each item type, and you can carry up to 4 active items at once. When you go to purchase an active item, a pop-up will appear asking you to select a key on your keyboard to attach it to. 
By default, the four keys available are Z, X, C, and V, but these can be changed in the game's settings menu. If you aren't comfortable building items in the heat of battle yet, that's no problem. Deadlock offers you a great way to create, copy, or use other builds instead. So let's walk through the custom builds and how to make or find them. For custom builds, I'd recommend doing this in a sandbox before the match, but it will work inside the match just as well. When you open your item shop, you'll automatically be placed in the Builds tab. On the top right, you'll notice a button that says Browse Builds, and when you click it, you'll be taken to the Custom Builds menu. By clicking on the Public tab on the left of your screen, you'll see builds other players have created and published to be used by anyone. If you find one you like, you can click the heart icon to save it as a favorite build, and it will open automatically whenever you start a match with that hero. If you click on Create New Build, you'll be able to create and customize your own build with different categories, and can even include an ability point order as well. To create a build, begin by naming it, and then clicking the Add Category button. Once created, you can name the category and provide some notes and a brief description as needed. To add items to this category, click on the Item tabs and begin selecting your items. When doing this, the order you click the items is the order they appear in the custom build, so feel free to navigate between pages as needed. In addition, you can leave notes on specific items by right-clicking them inside your category and typing out what you want. I've seen players use this to indicate when to buy an item or when to sell it to make room for another item. Once you are happy with your item selections, make sure to allocate your ability unlocks and upgrades by clicking the Edit button toward the bottom left of your screen. From there, your first four clicks on abilities should be the order in which you unlock your abilities, ending with your ultimate. After that, you can allocate the order of upgrades across all four skills as you earn ability points. Once you're happy with your build and skill point allocation, you can click Save Changes. Then, navigate to My Builds and favorite your build to make sure it shows up in game with that hero. For those that are still here, thanks for sticking around to the end of this Deadlock Decoded episode. If you found this breakdown of the item system helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more in-depth guides and tips on mastering Deadlock. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see covered, or if you have your own strategies to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.